a housemate and being the viewer are two different things um, to me it was not about you being know, fastest or the strongest it was about the emotional skills i get that has been my biggest take <laughs> Now, there has been a lot of reactions and counter reactions over on Cruise Wing. <laughs> so, there's been some fights, there's been some reactions, there's been some overreaction, there's been some hyping. Um, and hey, I'm going to be talking about all the reactions and the counter reactions over the latest win in the Big Brother and Sansi season three. You guys, we're going to be talking about that. <laughs> In this video guys if you're new to the channel thank you for stopping by my name is julia Chi and you're welcome to another episode of personality highlights here we keep it real if you like reality shows and real-time stories guys please click on the red subscribe button right now because i'm gonna take you on an interesting journey and we're gonna have a conversation about the things that are happening turn on the post notification bell guys let's get into the gist you guys know i love to keep it real here and i'm gonna be talking about a lot of things in this video <laughs> Let's get into it. I'm in a hyper mood though because the thing we're about to talk about is something that is super important, something that literally can make or break anybody. Now, um, there's been so many conversations on Twitter, Twitter war, Twitter war, Twitter war, Africans, you guys can fight though. <laughs> so people have been fighting the four guys who came out in top five. People have been calling out Libo. People have been saying, you know what, if you like, cry from now to tomorrow, the winner is the winner. People have been like, why is Temba trending? You know, people are like, gosh, one and tato, they are big. <sighs> Kilo day. What's up, people? Why are you all just hating? Why are you all just extending this? Why are you all just don't? Can you just allow these people breathe? It's not easy to be in a house for 10 solid weeks, guys. That's a long time. I mean, it's a lot. Um, a lot of people have been saying, you know what, to pull one because she was a Sangoma, she was a magician, she knew she was going to win. Why did Big, Big Brother allow her to get into the show? It is cheating. It is foul play. I'm like, really, guys? Like, really? <laughs> Let's talk about it. So there's been a lot of big reactions, and we actually saw um, interviews, the responses. But hey, if I continue with this video, I'm going to be playing one of the things, one of the comments that Mpo made that I will be extending, I'll be having the conversation from. So guys, listen up to the questions about being a Sangoma and how how that affected her game. Guys, listen up. You go through Sangoma phobia in your community, but I did mention that I'm not a magician, I'm a healer. So I went there and I was myself and I broke stereotypes so that within being a Sangoma, there still exists a, a human being, you know? So guys, from this conversation, you guys could clearly hear Mpo say she was not like a magician. She was a traditional healer. She that was her identity. She came in there and she was trying. She came in with the mindset of breaking away from stereotypes. And guys, this is literally one of the things that I feel as Africans we have to look at very critically because the truth is, I was one of those people that was like, okay, why did Big Brother allow a Sangoma? For me, I felt like a Sangoma is a herbalist. Is a traditional traditional person that has extra powers. To do things in the house but you you guys let the truth be told away from yes a lot of people said important one because of our spirituality our nigeria and um, sorry south africans africans are naturally religious people traditional people um love all those kind of things and that was basically her hype now guys let me just tell you give you the gist now if we look at the top five um i don't know but let me just say it was quite interesting and it was quite amusing amazing um, like very heartwarming to see Libo and family bond in this beautiful video or well, like when I said I was like oh my gosh these guys really need a break they've been through a lot um Gashwan like his interviews he was slaying it he was doing it um of course Demba was just being Demba some people are like calling him out and all that and all that. I'm like you guys take a chill pill so a lot of people were like why has some of the your favorites not been um congratulating Mpo over her win and I'm like guys it's been a lot these guys don't have a hand of their social media a lot of them are still dealing with the shock of how this thing turned out they are humans let, let's let them be I mean literally we're looking at that Temba was really dragged online I'm not even gonna lie people are like oh my god see his face he's hating 
you guys i don't want to talk about any negative thing in this channel like right now i think we've had a lot of negative comments and thoughts and all that all that i don't think we need more of that i just think what we need right now is clarity on how Umpo came out as a winner because the judges were looking forward now maybe if Zanzi season three is over the only thing we need to be looking at is the persons that are coming or looking forward to coming to any future bb reality show you need to know what's up how to put up your game together and get into the house and get the money <laughs> so guys um, when we look at it, I mean, okay, so for the people that didn't win, um, I'm going to say Tools shot himself in the leg. His social media, for an on-air personality not to have social media hype, I was really disappointed in Tools' team. Tools played his part in the game. Unfortunately, he had no team or his team just decided to just fall his hand. <laughs> That's what I'm going to say. Um, for Libo, Libo did. I mean, I was very excited that Libo came out as the third runner-up. I was really, really super excited for him. You know, second runner up looking at um um Temba, you know, I was like Temba kept it cool, he kept it together. But if I'm if I'm gonna tell you something, one of the things I, I would say that made somebody like Temba not come out the winner was because this guy was too hard on on the game and he came in with the concept of I'm gonna be myself and I'm gonna take this money for just being myself. And hey, this is one of the mistakes I'm gonna tell you. If you're coming into the Big Brother show in future or whenever. Don't ever think that coming with the strategy of I'm going to be myself is going to get you the money. It's a lie. <laughs> if anybody has been telling you that, guys, I'm going to tell you it is a big lie. If we're looking at the history of the Big Brother show, every single person that gets into the show comes with an extra strategy. I mean, sometimes more than one even to make the game sweeter. Demba did not come with that strategy. Demba just came with the flow. I'm going to be my person. I really didn't see Demba's strategy in the game. Apart from the levels man theory that people brought in, I just felt like that was not thick enough to get the money. <laughs> so because, I mean, I saw Demba's overconfidence and I was like, are you sure this thing will work? Um, but eh, it is what it is. His team has set up um, so many um, donations. They've been raising a lot of money on Capitec. I think they've made over 23,000 um, rands uh on um go fund me over 20 over 23 i don't know the, the money has been increasing and i'm excited that's one on his um instagram page has just pasted his account number there you guys go and donate for your favorites the truth is that all those guys especially the top three guys these guys will be very successful i mean when we look at the show um over here in bb niger we guys know we all know that white money want the money but people like the girls have been cashing out big time got the most contract See, I'm not even going to even like it. We'll all become successful. So let's stop this hate and beef and crazy tweets. I think these guys need a break. Yeah, seriously, because I mean, we are also have to check out for their mental health, their families, the support, the love, whether we hate or love. I mean, we all need to drop it. The show is over. Just good vibes. Now, guys, let's go to the two people that made it to top two. I shared the list on how people voted, but guys, I'm going to talk about these two guys. Why did they get to the top? My God, if you look at the ranks, the ranks of voting, hey, hey, it was loud. Gas One really tried. Team Gas One tried. But I felt like we had so many emotional um, Tash One. They were just too emotionally. Like, you know, everybody loves love stories when it comes to the Brother Show. And I think this is where Mpo actually won Gas One over the strategy of the shipping thing. For Mpo, she felt, you know, the shipping is going to spoil my game. I don't even want it. And her game was quite interesting. Now, I'm going to expose... The two, the, the things, the thing, the strategies that these two people implemented in their game. Now, when we look at Mpo and Gashon, eh, let me just expose them. They came in with this, into the show having more than one strategy, and I'm going to list that, those strategies out. Now, for Mpo, I shared these things in most of my videos in the channel. You guys can check out my older videos. I have a lot of these videos talking about these things. Um, guys, just check out this playlist. You understand better. Now, for Mpo, okay, let's start with Gashon. Gashon knew that his personality would not sell him. So he came with a multi-personality game. Yeah, because he, fe he felt he was a very boring person. And of course, we know he is. So he's a one-on-one -on -one person. He had to give these guys reason to, like, talk about him. He was just giving them, going the other way, um, trying the um, reverse psychology. That was the second strategy Gashon did. And the third strategy Gashon played into the game was to, to, to ship. To ship. He felt like the shipping strategy was going to work for him. Though he said he wanted love, he, he looked for love into the house. I still see that as a strategy because look at how he rigmaroled himself with um, Mpo. He, of course, he wanted a relationship with Terry. It didn't work. Mpo, from Mpo, you know, to... Uh, even he wanted to go to Nale. I mean, and then you guys, 
um, Tato, Yoli, and then Tato. I just felt like this guy put up the shape thing as one of his strategies. So that was three strategies for this guy. Now for Mpo, what was Mpo's strategy? Now Mpo, one good thing, I'm going to tell you, one of the benefits, one of the good things I saw about the ladies in the house that came for the Big Brother and Zanzi show was most of the ladies that came into the house came in with a community, came in with a tribe. Like, guys, look at it. Terry came with the adult content. Sister Mara came in with the, came in with the queer community. Tato came in with the dancing community. Mpo came in with the spiritual and religious community. And you guys, you guys, this is literally the strong backing. I mean, that was the strategy of Big Brother because Big Brother knew they were coming back after so many years they were gone. They needed people that had community to make the show go viral. And so it's like, okay. So the truth is, this strategy um, kind of would not have worked for Bo, but I mean, it was just a cutting edge for her that she had a community behind her. Now, one other thing that Bo implemented as a strategy was she wanted to move this game herself she wanted a solo game she wanted to play the independent, independent woman thing she wanted to play the feminine power thing she wanted to bring in the gender thing and guys i'm not gonna lie the poor win reminds me so much of mercy's win in the big brother ninja um what season was that now i think double wahala i can't remember but it was it's like it looks like the same because guys if you guys can remember i mean mercy came in with it a woman has not won Big Brother show. A woman has not won Big Brother show. So that was the narrative she kept pushing. And you know women. Hey, women cross Sunday. Um, women supporting women. You know those kind of narratives fly very far. Now, for Paul, I mean, looking at the Big Brother and Zanzi, Big Brother and Zanzi had just run for just two seasons before now. She, it was an early strategy to bring it, but she sure wanted to bring it in. And she brought it in and it worked for her. Because if you look at the first um, season of the Big Brother and Zanzi show, it was Mandala that won. The second one was a couple game, so it was more like a love thing. Um, the two million was shared between the two couple, between the two, the couple, um, that were two people. So, I mean, this one, it was kind of, for me, I felt it was too early to bring in the gender thing, but she needed to bring that as a strategy, and it worked for her. And of course, I'm like, yeah, why not? <laughs> so, now, that was like, no ship, solo game, um, community behind her, and guys, the last strategy Mpo decided to implement, A, I'm not even going to lie, was understanding that the conspiracy thing did not work. You know, she talked about it. You guys, it just didn't work, and she decided to play a solo game. Now, that is now, if you guys look at, in every season of the Big Brother show, one thing is always sure to happen. There would always be a conspiracy. There would always be that housemate that all the other housemates are going to be against. Now, for the Big Brother and Zanzi, it was just two people, Mpo and Gashwan. For this, it was Mpo and Gashwan. Like, everybody was literally on Gashwan's case. Everybody was literally on Mpo's case. But I'm going to tell you, I think the only thing that happened was Mpo's, the underground garage just decided to go very far. They were the viewing channel, they were had the viewing community, they had the voting community, they had the protesting community. Because you guys, if you notice any channel that kind of talks anything, says any calls, um, pull out, they're there to fight. <laughs> we didn't see that in the Tash Run community, even though it came, but it came in a subtle way. So we felt like these ones were not real fighters, but the pro community were the fighters. So I feel um the thing that really went viral for Mpo was just looking at how all the guys like pounced on her i mean you guys temba literally said that a woman was going to win the game and who was that woman i shared that video you guys can see check a clip of that the narrative Mpo was creating was sharing was hey you know what we want this thing to be a female that wins this. and she won with that narrative now guys i don't know but for me i just think these three strategies were the ones things that push them very far into winning the game guys but with the way temba was dragged temba temba literally had to like congratulate to bro i'm like all of you all take a chill pill the game is over let's keep it going um so the interviews were quite interesting we saw a lot of that happen today anyways guys anyways guys um moving forward in this channel one of the things i'll tell you is that um i'm not yet at 1000 subscribers but guys nearly i get this team to 1000 subscribers i'm gonna be launching um something in this community pretty soon you guys away from this i think one of the things that i need to help you understand is Having a community uh, kind of makes you have a louder cry. And uh, I think that was just what works for Mpo. So I am also not just an analyst. I don't just come to YouTube and do this thing. I have a business. I'm also an author. I have a book. And of course, I'm promoting tribe, understanding your purpose and working towards it. Guys, I'm going to be launching this book to the public. I actually wrote this book in 2016, guys, a very long time ago. But I decided to keep it solo on the low. I didn't want to expose it to the world. I'm going to be launching this book on the last day in April. 
and of course the pre-launch will be coming in you probably will be getting it cheaper <laughs> um so you guys um feel free to support me um on this journey um guys i really look forward to seeing you guys i have so much things coming up in this channel and one of the things that i'm one of the series i'm going to be starting up in this channel is the voice of reasoning because guys i think thought leadership is one of the things we need as africans to move ourselves forward and that's why when you listen to my reviews i'm trying to make you think and talk and understand things that are happening and narratives i don't know man but the truth is the game is over we're happy <laughs> I'm proud of this, I mean.